Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Hi everyone, welcome back to Wizards of Ecom. This is your host, Naomi. And today I have the pleasure to have none other than Michael Pinkowski on the show. Michael is the president of Parsimony and also he is a certified strengths find coach and consultant of Go Be Strong. Michael, it's a pleasure to be on the show, on our show for you, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I was uh, chatting with you uh, right before the recording, um, why I love to that you are on the show first off and i was also like uh saying that i'm a bit nervous is because uh you brought up a really really great subject when you were last time with um with your partner steve simonson on our show and i feel that about this topic specific topic that we're going to talk about which is a uh, strength um based leadership it's not so talked about and the reason i want to have you on the show it's first off to help us understand what what basically means to lead with your strengths and secondly to see how can this be um, used within your corporation either we are a solo entrepreneur a medium business or even in big businesses as well so first off i would start with what means to lead with your strength all right uh obviously that's the big question um uh, you, I, I listened to your podcast with Steve, mm -hmm. and he had a couple of things he kept saying over and over again, entrepreneurs solve problems. Mm -hmm. And really, one of the hardest problems for an entrepreneur is people. You know, uh, you can get a lot of tips and uh, stuff on, I don't know, uh, HS codes and PPC spending. And, you know, there's a lot of, of feedback that you get and a lot of uh, sort of uh, fact-based stuff. There's tried uh, and true tactics, but figuring out people is hard. That's, that's one of the hardest problems. So if entrepreneurs are mm -hmm. going to solve problems and impact their business, one of the things they've got to be able to do is figure out their people. And the other thing that Steve talked about was that massive changes were coming to the uh, supply chains. And I don't know, I, I haven't, talk to him about this, but I think there are even bigger changes coming to employees. Mm -hmm. We've heard about the great resignation. Lots of people um, are, you know, quitting jobs. Um, I was in our grocery store down the, the hill from us, and you can work in a grocery store now, and they're offering $20 an hour to start. Yeah. Um, this is a job that used to pay $7 an hour. And I mean, like, you know, two years ago. Um, and so the ability to find people, keep people, hang on to people is, is a, a really big topic. And strengths-based leadership is some stuff that's been put together by the Gallup organization over many years, many, many decades, really. Um, and we all know Gallup because they do polling. They're out there um, you know, uh, researching and, and polling people about political stuff, but they actually make most of their money um by studying the american workforce that's the they're kind of under the radar there but that's the vast majority of what they do they've got a small office in dc that does polling and they've got a big beautiful campus in omaha where they study the american and the international workplaces and what their research told them was if you can focus on what you're good at you'll do better mm -hmm. and strengths-based leadership is got real two main parts to it one is for individuals to understand what their strengths are and then just try to lean into those strengths and sort of deal with manage or even avoid in some cases what their weaknesses are um, and then when they kind of get themselves dialed in and they kind of know who they are then they can go to, to work and and talk to their teams um, and say, you know, what are your strengths and how can I make you better? And that's where the, su the real success comes from. So strengths-based leadership is just understanding what you're good at, finding ways to use that to get the actual work done, 
because Gallup measures everything in productivity at the end. They don't do it with warm, fuzzy feelings. They don't do it with, you know, uh, a happiness score. They say, is the organization more productive? Do they do more quantitatively of what they are trying to do? Mm. And then how do you how do you go from being just an individual to being somebody that, that sees that that works for you and how do you make it work for your organization? So mm. that's the, the, the best part of that. Now we can talk about strengths if you're ready. <laughs> yes, I am. And I think like I just started very, very strong. So uh, first of all, so like you describe what actually the concept means and talking about strengths as well. Uh, what do you think is the most important because it was like about individual level understanding first you, how you work and then applying, I mean, having that concept understanding and then applying to, to your, uh, I don't know, business corporation or like to, to the whole structure that you already have. And you were talking about strengths. Now, first off, what are strengths and how, how, do, the, how do you define strengths and what is this test that you're taking to find out the strengths, basically? So the, the, the test is what they call an assessment. And it takes about 40 minutes and it costs uh, as little as $20 um, and, and not more than $50. So it's not some big, huge commitment of time. It is not some uh, ex extravagant expense. Mm -hmm. um, and what it does, well, so let's, first of all, let's understand what, what strengths are. So there are things that, that everybody's good at. Um, they have talents. Um, um, my wife, and, and these are her words, uh, my wife says she can have a conversation with the front door. She has no trouble walking up to people and, and talking to them. When I go grocery shopping with her, she's forever, you know, seeing somebody that she's never met before and complimenting them on, on their dress or their uh, handbag or what's in their uh, shopping cart and striking up a conversation with them. It terrifies me. I cannot do that. I am not good at that. I never will be good at that. You cannot train me to be good at that. I don't have that as a talent. She does. Now, um, this weekend, uh, we had to, we're remodeling a bathroom and I'm putting in a ceiling fan and I had to figure out how to vent it out of the room. I'm pretty good at that. She was not. I and mean, she's very smart. She's got a master's degree. She's, you know, but this was something where I like to talk it out with her. She has ideas, but when it comes time to know that you need a uh, three and an eighth inch hole saw to get through, uh, you know, past on just underneath the soffit and you're going to have to put in a reducer because of the room that you got there. I get all that. I'm good at that. I have that talent. I, I have the, uh, I'm a mechanical knack, if you will. So lots of people have talents. Lots of them are different. What Gallup did was they said, how do we kind of, collapse these hundreds and hundreds of different talents down into some themes. And so what they came up with was 34 different themes. And I'm just going to do a couple of them off the top of my head so that you have a sense of what they're about. Mm -hmm. um, one of my top 10 is something called positivity. Mm -hmm. um, I can almost, I almost always believe that it's going to be a good day and we're going to figure stuff out and, and we can, uh, it's all going to turn out. Okay. Um, that's the, the Ted Lasso in me, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, we lost the game, but look at all the stuff we learned, you know, um, somebody that might, somebody else might have competition and they might say, we lost the game. That's really terrible. I am going to go and work my tail off because I don't ever, ever want to lose anything ever again. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they have that competitive spirit and that, that nature. Um, I have a learner in my top five. Learner means I'm just super curious about stuff. I, um, it, it's a little bit like uh, ADD. You know, I, um, I go through emails in the morning and I get a thing from the Washington Post and I have to click on almost every one because I got to know what's going on. You know, I should be working and instead I got to know what's going on in the world and how does this connect and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I'm just really curious about stuff. So in some ways, I know a lot about many things. I, I'm not, not all that deep on some of them, but I've, I've heard of them. I've seen that. I, I'm aware of that, you know. Um, 
somebody else, my wife, you know, I told you she can talk to people. That one is called Woo, Winning Others Over, W-O-O. Um, and and she can. She, you, you meet her and you just naturally say, geez, I met Jennifer and, and isn't she great? And she's, you know, convinced me that my dress looks great, you know, or that, uh, that this brand of uh, chocolate syrup that I picked out is the best one, you know. Um, she's just got that uh, ability. Other people have... Um, uh, well, uh, Steve, I, we, he and I joke about this all the time. Steve has responsibility. Mm -hmm. it, it weighs on him. But he, if he says something, he's going to do it. He's going to keep his word. Um, and we had a personal example of that in the last week. Um, he told us that something was going to happen. And if it didn't happen, he would change his travel schedule and go make it happen. And, and he did. He got off an airplane halfway home to go and make something happen. Uh, it's just because he said he would do it, you know, that's responsibility. You, you keep your word, you feel responsible for others around you. You want to take uh, care of, of all that you can and, um, and make sure that it all works out. So that's just a handful of these different strengths. Um, and, and there's, like I said, there's 34 of them in total. And this 40 minute test just asks you a bunch of questions there. I, I forget how many there are. I think there's 140. I'm not sure of that. Um, and then you just uh, rate them on a scale. This is um, uh, very much like me, or this is not at all like me. Or um, these two things, I'm much closer to this one than I am to that one. Um, and the beauty of it is, at the end of the day, there's no bad answers, right? One of the hardest things that I try to tell people that are going to take the assessment um, is, just clear your head and just answer honestly, because there are no bad answers. You're, you're not going to get a thing that says uh, you're a terrible person. You should just go to jail and stay there. You know, that's that's not one of the things that, that comes out of this. Mm -hmm. You come out of it with at least your top five strengths and they're all marvelous. Whatever your top five are, I probably wish I had all of them because they're all really cool, um, but they're not my top five. My top five are, are pretty unique. And, and probably don't overlap yours very much. Um, uh, someplace I've got, a, I brought my slide deck from the, the other day and I thought, uh, yeah, here, the chances of my top five being in the exact same order as somebody else's top five is one in 33 million. Oh, wow. The chances of just having the same top five of you and I, the chances of you and I having the same top five in any order, right? is one in 340,000. So there's not a lot of mics out there. There's not a lot of noemis out there, okay? So uh, you're unique and knowing yourself and being able to understand yourself and why you're good at some stuff and why you're not good at other stuff gives you a chance to just be more successful. You can, you can like I said, you can patch your gaps or you can, um, uh, find people that that have different talents and you can partner with them on stuff and and it's just a, a much better way to live yeah i hope uh, i answered your question back there you did answer more than my one question yeah definitely definitely and i love how you also put it with the test i was like very very anxious first that i took the test i wasn't sure what kind of test is this you know then i just as you yeah. were saying just I'm just going to answer as i would normally answer like very like honestly and it's funny that uh once that you're taking the test and once that you are given the answers it's like oh that's really me that's like how, how did they describe me so fast you know and uh, it's funny I, i'm also a learner learner is my first one like i am doomed <laughs> so <laughs> i'm learning all the time yeah. so <laughs> yeah so that so. leads you to things like podcasting where you can talk to people just because it's you're you're you end up being good at podcasting because you're hungry for information you listen to the host because you want to know and, and you want you ask good questions because you want to know more yeah it's, exactly. it's just a really good fit I, I love that you already like understand how learner works and you can also explain why it's a good fit so yeah <laughs> brilliant um <laughs> there i think like as you were explaining if i understood correctly you're taking the test and then you see which one fit or which one you it represents you better because there are like 34 like uh different um how do you call them different personalities or different well, 34 strengths strengths yeah. there you go 30 and there are also the, the the top five should represent you mainly so it's or how, how does it work yeah 
Yeah. So, so there's a, there's a couple of, of steps to this. So, like I said, you can go to Amazon and buy the book for 20 bucks in the back of the book. There's a code that says, take the test. And again, it's all done by Gallup. So yeah, there you go. This That's one book. of them. Um, and, and so it's all done by Gallup. So it's all research stuff. It's not, you know, uh, me doing some hocus pocus thing. And by the way, I don't get anything out of this. Like there's no money involved in this entire conversation for me. So, so you, you, you take the assessment and then on, in the $20 version, you get uh, just your top five in the $50 version, you get all 34. And that the advantage to that is that it lets you see your top 10. Now, the reason people pay the extra $30 is because they want to know what their bottom five are, which is just silly, but everybody does it. <laughs> but what you're really after is your, your top 10, because those are the, the dominant strengths. That really tells the picture of, of who you are. And even though they're ranked, they're all relatively equal because different things kind of play into different things. So like I, what's the, the, a good example would be, if you're uh, working at, if you're at a trade show, right? Um, certain strengths will will come into play uh, if, if you're with around all those people and seeing all that stuff. Versus if you've got some uh, work to do doing some analysis, um, you're going to uh, have other strengths come into play. So you're you may in one situation you might use your strengths number, you know, one, three, and five, and another one, whole different situation, you could be very successful and use strengths, you know, six, seven, and 10. They're, but those are the dominant ones. Those are going to dictate how you look at the situation, work with the situation and succeed in the situation. Um, the next 10 are really just, they're sort of there. They're, you, you use them sometimes, but you're not that good at it. You know, uh, again, I, I forget where, where woo is for me. Um, it's, I don't think it's in my bottom five. Um, but you don't, <laughs> so it's very low, <laughs> but you don't, you know, so you just, you just kind of, it's there. I can, I can be nice to people if I have to, <laughs> yeah, if it's a must. Um, yeah. And then there's other things that you're just plain terrible at. Like for me, competition, I am just not competitive. I just, it does not motivate me. It has little to do with my success. Um, and it's just not just not who I am. I can't, if you wanted to, I like to tell the story. If uh, there was a, a sales contest where I worked one time and they made it a contest and it's, and, and they said, this is what you're going to do. And I, I had no interest in the contest. So I sort of skipped it and I just went out and did my job. Um, Cause my job was, you know, letting people see that their business could be better if they used our product. And I have futuristic, which allows me to use words to paint a, a view of tomorrow that's that's a better picture. Mm -hmm. And I have strategic, which allows me to sort of marshal my arguments and find a path and, and do stuff. And I use those strengths and I won the dang contest. <laughs> okay. But I didn't win it because I wanted to be number one. I just won it because I wanted to do a good job and and and, and do stuff. Um, so those are the different, uh, the, the way the different strengths come in. Once you've got that, this, I was a too, I spent too much time on that. I'm sorry. Once you see that, then you start to go to work and you say, wow, this does match up with who I am. This does make sense. And when you know that those are your strengths, then you can start to lean into them. I was talking to a guy and he had to, he, he, he was, he had been out of work for a little while and he was getting worried. He, he, this was uh, like three years ago and he was worried about finding a job. And he says, but I've got uh, two interviews lined up and I just, you know, I don't know what to do. And so I said, well, listen, the interviews were, for whatever reason, we knew the interviews were like a week away. So I said, I, I sent him a, uh, the assessment. I said, take this and and uh read through it and then give me a call to, let's talk tomorrow a little bit so he did that that night calls me up the next morning and says wow that's amazing this really feels like me i said okay well that's a great start i said now let's talk about these interviews that you're going to be doing and he said well one of them is this kind of a job and you got to do this and i said okay so whenever they ask you a question i want you to I want you to really memorize your top five strengths and then when they ask you a question i want you to answer that question based on one of those top five. So I kind of grilled him 
on his top five. I really wanted him to, to understand them. And we spent like the hour, you know, spending like 10 minutes on each one of them. So we really understood it. And then I, and I said, now, when you get interviewed and they say, well, how do you go about doing this or that? You just say, you know, just go through the top five in your head and just pick one, whatever one comes to your mind first and answer it based on that. So we did, and he got job offers from both companies. Now, you know, your mileage may vary. I can't promise these results, blah, blah, blah. But the point is that he knew what his strengths were. And when they asked him a question that he didn't know what the question was going to be, he kind of knew himself and he said, this is how I'm going to approach this situation. And, and it was so convincing because it was him, because it was authentic, because he wasn't trying to figure out what they wanted to hear. He came across really well. And after a bunch of interviews with no offer, he goes into two and gets two offers. Just, you know, boom, boom in the same week. So then he says, now I got to buy you beer to pay you for the test. And how are we going to choose between these two offers? <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. This is why he bought the beer to have you sit down and actually talk about, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. The way it's funny that you were saying about competition. I was just looking at my my test, and it's like competition for me is number thirty three. So they're there. <laughs> yeah, I'm also not competitive. Yeah. Right, and yeah. you're successful, right? Yeah. I don't know how many times I've had a boss that says, "Well, who doesn't like to compete?" And I, you know, now I'll just raise my hand and say, "I don't." But <laughs> but it used to be. That that was like um, a mark against you, right? Yeah. I mean, we all love sports. We all love the champions. We all love, you know, the winner. And, and that's cool. But you don't have to be competitive to get there. You can, you can use other things to get there. That, now, that, that's the point. Follow up to what you were saying. To, you're getting other things to get there. Like I, coming from the school system, I think that I personally always had, and probably I'm not the only one, who was like, you have to be good at all these things, or you have to be very competitive. You have to be very, you want to achieve things. You have to be very responsible. You have to be like very smart and everything. And most of the time, what I feel is like, um, I felt somehow like damaged good <laughs> because I didn't have that. Yeah. So my main strengths were relationship uh, building. That's my main thing, you know? And my question here is like, if you know already, and if you took the test and if, if you have these skills and you would like to change them. How can you do it so you can also be strategic, yes, in the same time, emotional, or be able to talk to someone? Well, you, you can't really change your strengths. They okay. are who you are. They're pretty deep inside you. But what you can do is, is lean into them to find a solution. Mm -hmm. So um, my, um, my, my learner can get in the way of my productivity sometimes. And I, I can wish that I had the strength of uh, focus, yep. uh, right? The ability or, or the, the strength of discipline. Both of those are way down the list for me. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've done, and, and I, I do this all the time, is I use, I have, uh, let, let me put my five on the table here. I have uh, futuristic, which means I see a better tomorrow. I have strategic, which says, I see different ways to get someplace and I can choose the right path to get to where I need to go. I have um, connectedness, which means that I see how systems interact and I see um, how uh, people help each other. Uh, I have belief, which is I have a strong sense of right and wrong. I, I cannot do something that is bad. I, I just can't, it just doesn't work. Um, and then I have learner in, in my top five. And then, like I said, uh, positivity is in my top 10. So I start the day saying, it's going to be a great day. That's the first thing, right? The next is I think about where do I need to be tomorrow? Where, if, I, if, I, if I have these dreams all the time that things are going to be better tomorrow, what do I need to do today to get there, right? And then I kind of connect two or three of them together because I always have so many things to do. So I kind of connect two or three of them together. And I say, okay, which of these should go first? And let, if we did that one, could we pick up a couple more along the way? And maybe we'd have an amazing day and pick up, you know, four or five things. So can you see positivity, um, futuristic, um, connectedness, strategic, <laughs> you know, um, I, I'd use those things to say, okay, here's a list. Let's, let's focus on these things. And, 
And even though I don't have a uh, discipline to always write down all of the list and then check them all off the list, I'm not that kind of a person, but I still have that framework in my head that helps me to put together a good day. Mm, got it. So rather than working on something that you would wish to have, work with you what you already have, because those are actually going to be way stronger that you want to wish to have, if I understood correctly. The Absolutely. Strength. Got it. Okay. Absolutely. This is super super. I, and I, you know, I I talk to people sometimes and I'll and they'll say, you know, geez, I, you know, how do I get more or something or other? And I say, wait a minute, tell me what your top five are. Again, there's this the you have to focus on what is the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Focus on on what's right. Um and and uh and I say, so let's lean into those things and and can that get you there? Well, sure, you can do that. And the beauty of it is it's easy because you're already good at it. You already have that as a strength. Um, if you really want to get deep into this stuff, you can hire a coach and they can help you to understand the strengths better. And you can um, start to, there's exercises where you can start to see where you use those strengths. Um, and you can look back at when you were successful and how you those strengths made you successful. Um, and then that helps you to kind of consolidate your effort and, and focus on your strengths um but but that's all a, a, a deeper journey honestly you can get so much just out of knowing what they are putting names on them and then using those words you know regularly when you when you think about yourself or when you talk to others mm -hmm. i love how you put it and i think the next thing or the next question would be there because like yes you gave a brilliant presentation there were I don't know, around 20 people showed up, 30 people showed up. Everyone said that it's a brilliant presentation. And afterwards, when I went there to talk to you and congratulated you on the presentation, you gave me something like, I hope at least two or three people are going to actually exit upon what I just talked about today. And that's exactly my next question, like, because all this is like brilliant. And in theory, it's amazing. How many people do you see that actually are going to come and really take it, like take it seriously? first off in their lives and then also in their organizations. Well, th that's one of the reasons why I'm really glad that, that you reached out to me because it, it gives me a chance to, to say this. There's something about PPC strategy or sourcing tactics or whatever that somehow they've got a sex appeal that understanding yourself and, and working better with people doesn't have and i just i don't quite understand that mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's something you know um you know about how to run a better uh, replens program that you know people you know wig out and pay a ton of dough and, and when i show up and say for 20 dollars, you can know yourself better and and uh and get to know your team better and you will be more successful you know it's a mm -hmm. long-term strategy mm -hmm. uh somehow that doesn't come across quite as well but mm -hmm. it really is if the, the the smart people know that investing in themselves and investing in their teams is is a long term competitive advantage. Yeah, it's it's a way to to build uh, a resilient uh, workforce. It's a way to retain good people. It's a way to um, attract good people when you've got a good team, you know, they, they go out and they find other people. Um, <laughs> I was asking somebody on our team, uh, you know, you're amazing. I said, how do, how do we get more people like you? Do you have some friends? She's I've got friends. None of them are good enough for this place. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. You know, um, so, uh, that, that's, that, that that's a, a compliment. And then that, that's a, ends up being a competitive advantage uh, for me as a manager and for us as a company. I love it. I love how you put it. And at, at some point you are saying that smart people are reaching out so on. You just made me smart. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> 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 no, but for real, like I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And also, as you were saying yeah, about the sex appeal of like PPC or all this, I see those like fast, 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 fast. Okay. I'm just doing this technique and it's going to work when here it's really like you're working on yourself. And that's like, I'm always saying the ugliest thing and the hardest thing is to look yourself in the mirror and see, Hey, those are the things that look, this is who, who I am. You know, most of the time we are like, as I was saying, sometimes are very, uh, 
uh, appreciated by the community or by people around us because we have those like very hard skills, you know, sometimes not. And most of the time, those are taking the, that's taking the most time. That's taking the longest time to really build yourself up and are also like build your um, others up in this scenario. So I, I totally agree with what you're saying. That's why probably it's not so like hot topic because it's hard, you know, <laughs> harder than PPC. Well, that, you know? that does <laughs> that that does lead me into the one thing I definitely have to say on your show at least once. Please do. The the guy that came up with all this is is Don Clifton, and the 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 stuff is called Clifton Strength. So if you want to Google this at the source, you just Google Clifton Strengths, one word, and it'll take you right to the Gallup organization, and you can. Uh, get the assessment and do whatever you want to do. But but Don Clifton's got this great quote, and, and the quote is, imagine what would happen if we focused on what is right with people instead of fixating on what is wrong with them. And I'm telling you, if if you could just put that on your bathroom mirror and look at it every day, you know, your world would change. And And if, you know, if as, as our little Guthrie used to say, you know, and if a couple of people did it, you know, it would be a thing. And and if some more people did it, it would be a movement. <laughs> yeah. And and if more people did it, it would be a revolutionary way to make the world a better place. Imagine what would happen if we focused on what was right with people instead of fixating on what is wrong with them. Mm -hmm. It's a really powerful thought. Uh, yeah, it's very powerful. I don't think it's selling so well because if you're not looking at the what's wrong with people, you cannot sell like solutions for their problems. You know, so I think it's all marketing <laughs> hook. <laughs> Me as a marketing expert, we put it. <laughs> I think it's all about marketing. Now, all this is brilliant. How can someone once that they know what their strengths are and they are working on their strengths? I, I mean, they're working based on their strengths. Can actually bring all this knowledge within whatever they're doing because we are talking about e where like uh econ focus now here if you are a solo entrepreneur or if you're a medium business even if you're a large business how would you take all this knowledge and really apply it to whatever it's next great question so so first you you know learn your top five or your top ten and and spend a little time you know soaking in that getting you know starting to see it in your life and things like that then um, I would tell you to go to your 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 inner circle, maybe. Let, let's let's imagine just as a to to kind of uh, draw a, a, a temporary picture. Mm -hmm. uh, let's imagine an organization that's got um, you know uh, ten people in it, um, some virtual assistants and some uh, freelancers and and things like that. Um, I would if I was starting over, I would. I would go to then to you know my next two or three people that I worked with a lot every day, you know, and I would say, hey, listen, uh, this is going to sound crazy, but are you familiar with Clifton Strengths? Uh, can I give you twenty bucks? Would you take this assessment? And there's no bad answers, you know. You're going to learn what your top five strengths are, and I would do that with my top two or three people. Let them get the hang of it, and then I would say, hey, listen. I'll buy you a sandwich. Let's just go. I just want to hear what your top five are. And I want to tell you what mine are. And, and let's just kind of, you know, go back and forth. And one of the ways to really learn this stuff, of course, is to teach it, right? The best way to learn is yep. by teaching. Yep. So if you knew you were going to sit down with somebody and they had five strengths totally different than yours, and you had to kind of do a little homework on it, you know, you would start to say, oh, so that that really is them. This mine were me, but those are them, you know? And, and then start doing it and then use the word, right? You know, you might be in a meeting someplace and you would say, hey, um, you know, we, we've got all these great ideas because I've got ideation, but we got to get some of them done. And remember at lunch, you told me that, you know, we, we discussed that you've got achiever. That means you like checking stuff off. You like finishing stuff. You just love that. Um, could, could I get you to help me with this? Because we got to get some of this done. You know, I'm, I'm kicking up too many ideas and we got to get a few projects finished. Yep. And I would, I would, you know, lean into that. Right. And then now you've got, you know, after a couple of months, now you've got your group of two, three, four people that are, that have this vocabulary and between, 
you know, three of you, you're going to have, you know, probably at least 10 different strengths, you know, that you're going to be able to explore and understand and use those words. And then you say, okay, now listen, we're going to do the whole organization. And again, 20 bucks times 10 people is 200 bucks. It's, this is not, there, this is no place to make a lot of money is what I'm saying. <laughs> Selling these tests. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a great place for a bootstrapped organization to put together a, a, a uh, human development program, right? Where the people say, geez, you're asking, you're investing in me just 20 bucks, but that's you know, more than some companies do. And you care about me. You're learning about me. I'm learning about you and we're talking better, right? And when you start to use those words, they start to, to go through the organization. And the next thing you know, you're going to find out that a couple of people were in a meeting someplace and they were been tasked with a project and they said, hey, can we go get so-and-so because they've got Activator and they could help us get this thing going or they've got ideation and they could help us get this thing going. Or maybe they've got deliberative and they could help us sort out what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. and, and making sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, so they, they would start to know this and, and you're, I mean, in the, in the Gallup world, everybody puts their top five in the email signature line. Everybody, you know, says, this is who I am and this is what I do. And you start to learn that about people and you interact with them better and you start to draw on them when you need them. Got it. So if you're using this within an organization, ideal would be. I'm summarizing what you were saying. So ideal would be if there are 10 people at least to give them the test, see where they excel, what are their strengths, and then based on that, also have them learn the language because this is also like a, a lingo. Like you have those skills, so uh, you have your, those traits, so you can talk to, at the same level with them, correct? Did I understand that correctly? Exactly. Got it. And in, in this scenario, because we were talking about having already employees who have these um, abilities, is that also an option to hire someone who doesn't have? For example, as, I, as you were saying, I'm also like a learner and I learn, love to learn, yet maybe not executing on all the ideas that I'm learning. So here, would I look for, like, let's say, project management? Am I looking for that particular strength with them? Or should be already in the organization and find that person who already has it? Um, does it make sense what I'm trying to say? Like, Yeah, so, so um, having... Uh, you you don't use strengths to select a person, right? So because because you're going to be wrong, right? You're going to say, "Geez, I need my uh, I need a salesperson, so I want one that's competitive." Because I've decided that only competitive salespeople are good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. Um, so if that's what you do, you're not going to get you know the right person. It is better to interview as you would normally do, you know, for skills and experience and relationships or whatever matters. Um, and then once they're on board, let them take the assessment and see what are their strengths. Now you know how to work with them. You know how they become successful. So there's a great anecdote about the vice president of strategic communications that took the assessment and she didn't have strategic and she didn't have communication <laughs> as strengths. But she was really good at her job, yep. right? It's just that she used other strengths to, to do that. So so that's the, the key thing. Got it, love it. All right, so you're not hiring for one specific strength, but you're hiring the person. And then within this person, you're going to look up their strengths and see how can that fit with whatever you have already, right? Correct, absolutely. That sounds great. So um, at this point, are there any questions that I should have asked about this topic that I haven't? No. Um, um, the but I, but I want to express this idea because because this is you know your, your your question about you know why don't more people you know do this mm -hmm. is, is is really key. This is a great way to know yourself. I use this with my guys all the time. Um, I, I know what their strengths are. And as I go to, to talk to them about something, I know that I, if I present it in such a way that it fits their strengths, they're going to look at it as, you know, as in baseball, it's, it's as a pitch they can hit, right? If I, if I serve it to them the right way, they're going to say, oh, I can crush that, you know? Um, so I, I do that all the time. Um, Steve and I, 
do it. You know, he'll talk to, we'll be talking about a situation and Steve will say, Hey, you know, I need you to lean into your strategic on this one. Um, and, and sort through some answers and come back to me with some choices and a recommendation, you know, well, mm -hmm. geez, that just fires me up. Cause I know that, that I can do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. whereas if he told me to write with my left hand, I, it would be a terrible experience, you know? So, uh, so that's the, the, the first part. Um, but then, like I said, the workforce is changing. I understand, you know, Steve's point about how China is changing and sourcing is changing. And, you know, there's going to be, you know, working with different countries and, and, and different combinations, but there's also this an enormous change in the workforce and an entrepreneur needs to have uh, tools and plans about how to, to deal with this. And one great plan with team is to retain them right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if you like them, if you're glad that they choose to spend their days working on your project, you should retain them. And, and if you invest in them, they will appreciate it. People don't quit jobs, they quit managers. They, they leave the manager because they don't like them. They, and, um, and, and, and it takes an enormous amount of money to to pay someone to like you, okay? <laughs> but if you invest in them, if you help them to grow, if you if you want them to develop and, and, and grow, they will stay. And you can reduce your turnover, you can reduce the amount of time you spend looking for somebody, you can reduce your risk of hiring bad people by investing in them. And, and again, it's 20 bucks a person, so, you know, and, and it's not to me, it's to Gallup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's an online assessment and it's in, I don't know, I think it's in 27 languages. Um, so if you've got a team in the Philippines and and uh, uh, they wanna take it in, in Tagalog, bingo, not a problem, done. Um, if you've got freelancers in uh, China and they wanna take it in Mandarin, not a problem. So, um, so invest in your people try to, to get to understand them better so that you can retain them so that you can build a culture that will you know get you through these coming years you young people don't know anything about inflation i do i remember it it's a big deal it it brings a ton of change right um there's gonna if, if if you thought things were you know busy the last couple of years wait till you see the next five years they're going to be busier um and you got to have a team that can react and adapt a team that that talks and communicates a team that understands and cares about each other um this is a way to build a strong team mm, got it i love it and i honestly it's funny that you were saying that i also see on um uh, not necessarily like in business but also like on personal level because both me and my husband took the test and honestly it's not only helping you to see what the other person is trying to do, but also make them understand, hey, this is the language that I should talk to them because otherwise they might not in like they are not understanding you, you know, they're not understanding your language. So I definitely would highly recommend also if you're looking like you're in a, a relationship, also then it's going to help you, not only like in business. So yeah, yeah it's it's really yeah. cool. It, it gives um, you the context and perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also like it, not only that, but for example, like for, for me, for example, as a learner, I love to learn a lot, but I'm not always executing on what I'm learning, you know, and that's something that it's driving my husband crazy. Now he understands why, you know, <laughs> also like for me, like yeah. it's similar, you know, at least, you know, and you, you, I think you can have the other one to really excel, to not only do the things that they are really good at, but also to, if they have blind spots to notice them and to help them, hey, look, there's the blind spot. Be careful there, you know? So I definitely agree with what you're saying. Michael. Yeah, we didn't get into we didn't get yeah. into blind spots at all, but that there's a whole nother conversation around that and how understanding them can be helpful. Yeah, definitely. If we had like one more time, like 20, 30 minutes of your time, we're going only and talk about blind spots. <laughs> because those are like my favorite you know i was like okay reading okay i'm excellent i'm, I'm excellent at this i did that oh blind spots okay oh that's what i'm doing you know blind spots that's what i'm so definitely uh michael to be super super respectful of your time before we're wrapping up um 
I love to ask a few questions to my guests to first of know them better and also to have our listeners understand how they can improve themselves about the topic that we talked. So first off, it's if you would have a superpower, which one would be and why would you choose it? So I'm not a Marvel Universe guy. My whole family is, but I am not. So I, I hope this is not too quaint of an answer. But I believe in love. All right. I think it is the superpower. And while invisibility and giant hammers and whatever would be fun sometimes, I really, really believe in love. I was on Twitter this morning. There's a lady I follow. She's a minor celebrity. And she made a post that just she she was just down on herself. It was just it was really sad. And I, I'll don't, I don't know her. I'll never be as famous as her. I'll never be as successful as her. Um, but I, I just reached out to her and, and uh, I said, it's debatable whether you're as bad as you say you are. But there are thousands of people that love you. Mm -hmm. And she came back and liked the post. And, and, and I, I feel like I did the world a little bit of good because this is somebody that's She's a creative person and, and we need those. And uh, so I just believe in, in love and trying to help people. You know what, invisibility and all this stuff, I would love it too, but honestly, without love, what is out there? And let's leave it to that. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. All right, so which is a $20 or less investment you recently made that made you better at leading? Well, I, you know, you, you, that's a pitch I can hit. Take, spend 20 bucks, get the book, take the assessment. You can go to Gallup and pay 20 bucks. You can go to Amazon and buy the book and it's 20 bucks and comes with an assessment. It's 20 bucks. It's just awesome. And again, it's, it's, it's to Gallup. It's not to me. I get nothing out of it. It's just me saying this is a better way to live your life. Brilliant. And I'm also like, I, I say the same thing. Yes. And also you can go for the, the, the next 10 as well that's a bit like higher price so that's 50 yeah, dollars or bucks. less that's 50 dollars or less so it's still like <laughs> let's do it <laughs> yeah yeah most definitely all right so what are your top top three favorite books and why do you love them all right so just to stay on topic for a minute you you held up strengths-based leadership mm -hmm. and that's a good one um there's one called it's the manager which i like there it is good there for is. you Thank that you. was not coordinated people <laughs> that's just a that fan it's um, a huge fan yes <laughs> uh um i think it's the managers is an excellent book on this topic and it may look like a big heavy book but the back half is all reference it's really just mm -hmm. maybe 120 pages on the front half that, that matters so it's not a heavy read but my three books, this, and none of these are business books. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of business podcasts, and they're all, you know, business books. So let me give you three that are not, Please but have a connection. Um, the first one is The Martian all right. uh, by Andy Weir. The movie was good. The book is way better. The audio book um, is even better than that. And, it, and it's, it's a business book because it tells us that bad stuff is going to happen and we've got to solve it. And just when we think things are going good, there's going to be manure everywhere and we have to solve that, but we can't give up. There is a solution. We just got to work towards it. When I get stuck and depressed, I listen to the Martian to, to pump me up just because it's that great of a book. Next one, I guess is kind of a business book. It's shoe dog by mm -hmm. Phil Knight of Nike. And I like it because there's a lot of survivor bias, right? Um, we, we hear people on podcasts that talk about stuff and we assume that they're right because they got onto the podcast. And, and, and sometimes what they're telling us is old news. Sometimes what they're telling us is not applicable to today, but you know, they were successful once. And so we think they will always be successful. And that's just not true. Phil Knight, his book is, is super autobiographical, super candid about 
the failures and, and all of the bad stuff and where he screwed up. He's, and he doesn't just, you know, gloss over it. He says, I screwed that up. Um, and for that reason, I think it's a, a good book for entrepreneurs to, to learn from. Um, and then the third one is called The Boys in the Boat uh, by Daniel James Brown. And it's the story of a crew from, from my neck of the woods here in, in uh, the Seattle, Washington area. The University of Washington is a beautiful campus. It's right on Lake Washington. And uh, during the depression, um, they had a, a, a rowing team, a crew team. And it's the story of that team in 1930. I think the hero kind of started school in 32. Um, but it's the, it's the 32, I think through 36. Um, and it's there, there's a couple of, first of all, it's, it's an amazing story. It's an awesome audio book. Um, uh, and, and, and there's a lot of history that, that you pick up. And, and at the end of the day, it doesn't give anything away because it's on the cover. This group of kids that are, you know, that whose, whose parents are, are lumberjacks and, uh, laborers and stuff, they, they go to college, they get on this team and they end up being the U S representative to the Olympics. And despite tremendous adversity, they win right under Hitler's nose. Um, Hitler was at the race and they had disadvantaged the Americans and the Americans still win right under Hitler's nose. And, and it was an embarrassment to Hitler uh, and a great success for these kids. But the other part that's in there is you can watch the, 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 uh, the coach of the team whose name escapes me right now. Um, he has to figure out in this boat, who do you put where? And, and it, I would, if, if you told me to manage the boat, I would put the lightest guy in the coxswain position, right? He's kind of the, the, the guy that's watching the course and yelling. And then I would just put the other 10 guys in the boat and say, roll like hell. I, you know, what else do you have to know? They're, that's the sport, right? Yeah. And this guy breaks it down and says, no, different roles, different people are good at different things. And you need certain people in certain chairs in that boat because they are at their best in that spot. So the, the guy in seat three has a job that's different than the guy in seat five. It seems inconceivable, but it's there. And it really plays into this theme of strengths, right? That, that knowing, getting the right people into the right spots, doing the right stuff, you know, you can, you can put together a championship. And um, for those of you that are competitive, <laughs> 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 for those who, who are not you know they're still like the, the one who doesn't does a lot of competitiveness and it still has a place so please continue <laughs> yeah so so there's three books that are super fun you know we're, we're going into the holidays there's a lot we're going to be working our tails off from now till christmas if you need a place to relax here's a place to get some really good life experience some really good managerial examples that it's fun and it's easy and you know, it's um, it's it's a scoop of sugar that goes with all the the lemon juice that we get every day. Loved it, loved it. Great books as well. The Martian is the first one that someone is actually recommending me to listen to, which is like great. I haven't I, I watched the movie, so it's definitely. Thank you so so much. Oh, for, so much better for all these. Thank you. Let's. I'm always like putting them in my because I'm also like a like to listen to them rather than read to them because when i'm reading i'm reading very slow <laughs> so these are yeah. brilliant if i'm going to have them as audiobooks and the fourth and last question here would be how can people get a hold of you say hello find out more about also the coaching services also about parsimony as well yeah so um there's there's i'll give you maybe two email uh addresses yeah. i am the president of parsimony which is this uh, um, uh, ERP solution for e-commerce providers. And if you've got questions about that, you can reach me at michael at parsimony.com. Parsimony is P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-Y. Um, but I also am lucky enough to have one of the greatest domain names uh, ever. And you can reach me at michael at pincow.ski, P I N. K O W dot S K I, which is how you spell my last name. 
that's neat and thank you so much and i'm sorry i'm always miss like i'm i'm not saying it right it's parsimony right that's the way how you parsimony parsimony yep. there you go awesome thank you so so much for your time and thank you so so much for all this this is super super valuable and at, as i was saying i hope that all our listeners are going to really take action because at this point you just really have to take action take the test see who you are stay <laughs> see what your strengths are and see and understand what michael and i today were talking about the show it really makes a difference and it makes a big difference so thank you so so much once again and also everyone listening take care have a nice day and see you next wednesday take care bye bye it was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe rate and a review of the show. Until next time.